Hey everyone, I am here with Mr. Ricky Nelson of the uh, Team Legal Document Services out here in Thousand Oaks. Uh, address is 280 East Thousand Oaks Boulevard, uh, just next to Tarantula Hill, if you guys are familiar with the area. Thanks for joining me, Ricky. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So, I wanted to come to Ricky today because I personally, in my own life experience, as well as real estate experience, have had clients and myself that have had to go through the probate system. Um, if you're not familiar with probate, Rick will fill us in a little bit on that, but it's definitely something, at least I personally feel, you might want to try and avoid. Having a trust or a will in place can generally make the process much smoother when having to go through transfer of estates and that sort of stuff. So, Rick, I wanted to come to you and uh, ask you, first of all, what is the difference between a will and a trust? Because I think there's some confusion, some lack of knowledge on that. Fill us in. So, basically, there we have to get a little more detailed as to what is probate, what would go to probate, and how to prevent your estate going to probate. Okay. So there's, there's several categories of uh, stuff that we accumulate during a lifetime. One category is real estate. Another category is personal property, furniture, clothing, bank accounts, cars. Mm -hmm. And then a third category is life insurance, investment accounts, retirement accounts. Those are actually three distinct categories. Basically, without a trust, with a will or without a will, all real estate goes to probate. Okay. Period. Uh, personal property, uh, there's a magic number in California, which is $150,000 value at the time of death, doesn't go to formal probate. Okay. Except for real estate. Hmm. And then the third category, retirement, life insurance policies, those are contracts that you create where you designate a beneficiary. So... That doesn't go to probate. So then, what's a living trust and how does it avoid probate? First question is, what is probate? Let's, let's, ah, let's sorry, define that. I first. skipped right over that. Okay, so probate is the legal process where your assets are transferred to your legal heirs. That's if you didn't write a will and had no other method of uh, the forces that be know who to transfer your property to. In other words, when you die and you own a house, you're not here to sign a grant deed to transfer it to anybody. Mm -hmm. If you own it in joint tenancy, it could go to your surviving joint tenant. But if it's just in your name and you die with no will or no trust, then the legal process whereby the courts determine who your legal heirs are is called probate. The typical probate takes a minimum of 9 to 12 months mm -hmm. and... Uh, with all the, the court-appointed appraiser and the court filing fees and the hearings and the documents that need to be filed with or without a lawyer, we'll get into that in a minute, uh, can cost thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's probate. So with wills or no will, your estate goes to probate if you own real estate. Without a will, there's a predetermined legal schedule of who your legal heirs are. So it kind of goes... Children, if you have any, if no children, then parents, if they're still alive, if no parents, then brothers and sisters, and it goes on, second, third cousins. Okay. So it's called the chart of consanguinity. That's the formal so name of it. Courts will do their best to find any direct family members that will go along down the line if they can. Well, in, in essence, yes. In essence, yes. not always. It, well, the court doesn't do it, but the, okay. the attorney or the, you know, the family okay. does it. Got gotcha. survivors. So... Uh, but with a will, you, if you write a will while you're alive, you designate who your beneficiaries are. But it still has to go through probate so the court can verify that it's a valid will and that you've appointed an executor and the whole process still takes the same amount of time and the same amount of money. Okay. So now, the key to avoiding probate. <laughs> Tell us. <what> you, <laughs> you create a living trust while you're alive. Okay. And then... You transfer your assets from your name as an individual to your name as trustee of the trust. Okay. Then when you die, the trust has a life of its own. It doesn't die. Mm -hmm. It still owns the house. You've appointed in the trust paperwork a successor trustee, also it could be called an executor, who, have, who you authorize to then have the authority to distribute your property to your designated beneficiaries, okay. whoever they may be, relatives or not. It's your written instructions. So no delay, no lawyers necessary, no extra cost, merely a grant deed from the trust to the beneficiary. It gets recorded and it's done. So having a will, everything in the will goes through probate still? 
with a trust, everything with the exception of real estate, I don't want to say everything, be too general, but many things with the exception of real estate can be transferred to the beneficiaries outside of probate. Is that close to accurate? Very accurate, to, just to clarify. So anything the trust owns, so the way it owns it is by title. Okay. So we retitle the, the deeds on the house. You could retitle a bank account or a savings account so that it is owned by the, the trust. Okay. It's still yours when you're alive because mm -hmm. you're the trustee of the trust. Mm -hmm. And then your successor trustee doesn't own it, but is in charge of transferring it okay. upon death. So it definitely simplifies it. And, and if you compare the cost of probate for your estate versus the cost of preparing a living trust, the smart move is to do a living trust. What, uh, and I know it depends on the person and how much assets they may have, but I mean, is there an average cost to create a trust? Well... <laughs> so lawyers start at several thousands of dollars, and, and um, we do a flat fee of seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. No matter how many assets you have, and okay. How many kids you have, that's for the documentation, and then the only additional charge with us is we keep the uh, real estate separate because some people have one house, some people have five houses, so we charge an extra fee to tr to prepare the paperwork to transfer the house into the trust. Okay. All right. But that is uh, by far significantly less than lawyer's charge. Sounds like it. Uh, and if, if someone didn't have a trust or a will and the process had to go through probate, what's the approximate cost of that? Is there, can that even be calculated? Can you throw a figure on there, that? Well, once you get in the legal system, mm -hmm. there are, especially in the probate arena, there are mandated limits to what the lawyers can charge. Okay. And there's actually... In the, in the probate laws, it says what they're allowed to charge. Okay. 4% of the first 100,000, 3% of the next 100,000, 2% of the next 900,000, and 1% for everything over yeah. that. So if you had a million dollar estate, you're talking fifteen dollars or $20,000 in legal fees. Compared plus, to plus cost. 700 and No, that's for a trust. Well, to avoid probate. To avoid probate. Yeah. Right. I also do probates, by the way. Oh, okay. But I charge a flat 1% of the, of the appraisal. Okay. So it's still a disc, you know. All right. Because you don't need a lawyer for everything. You need someone that has some of 22 the years or more experience Thank in the you. business. Thank you. It's been doing it for a long time. Thank you. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, this is just a little bit of a small sample of, of kind of what you might want to go through and consider when trying to plan your estate. Uh, obviously, wills have their benefits, trusts have their benefits, but one of the two is something you should most definitely consider doing to try and avoid having to fully go through pro probate in that process. I've personally seen examples of when uh, someone passed away and their home had to be passed on to their heirs and it went through probate. I've experienced where I've had to deal with five different people that were in the process and it was an ugly mess. It tears families apart. It creates things, situations that just shouldn't have to be there. So using someone like Ricky who can go and make that process so much easier for you, so much easier for your family members down the road, is absolutely uh, advocated. Would you agree? That was a great summary and uh, well said. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys would like to get in contact with Ricky, I have his contact information down below, his website, his phone number. Like I said, he's right here in the middle of Thousand Oaks. So if you guys uh, live nearby and uh, want to come talk to somebody, to, uh, to get an idea of, of what the process might be, I'm sure Ricky would be uh, happy to talk with you. So, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think you did a great job. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. Come you, see me. Come see Rick. If you guys <laughs> have any questions about the process, uh, please feel free to give Rick a call if you have right. any process about having to sell your home or a parent's home or a family member's home if they may have passed away and need to go through that. I'm here to help you with that as well, guys. And keep oh, this in mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say all my consultations are free. Free consultations, even better. And as I was about to say, keep this in mind, no matter whether you're dealing with probate or trying to sell real estate, who you work with matters. So keep that in mind when hiring your next realtor or probate trust officer title, <laughs> legal document person here. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Okay. We'll talk to you next time. Very nice.